course materials folder. Um, Newtown put uh, this document that's got all sorts of useful like conversions and units and equations and stuff. And then there's this one that shows some examples of like how to lay out problems and everything. So if you're not sure how you're supposed to be doing stuff, by now you should though, but there's some resources for you to take a look at. You guys remember I have two rules, right? What is it? Simple. So if you're confused about something, just ask. You know, it reminds me, I mean, what was the um, screw up in the lab example? Oh, it's kilogram, 996, 9,960 kilograms per meters cubed was the reference density or calculated density. It's actually 996. Don't ask me where the zero came from. It's probably a decimal point missing in there. Put zeros in front of your decimals. I don't know what math teachers or K through 12 people told you to stop doing that. Yeah. But it pisses me off. Put zeros in front of your decimal. Well, because the decimal gets rubbed off. Oh, now, now point two becomes twenty. <laughs> I know right? there. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we don't put zero point two. You just said point two. So they think that way. Yeah. Think in language. So you think point two. You're like, ah. Again, it's an engineering standard Still. that we try to do. Okay. So we will teach you by the time you leave here to have some semblance of a profession. <laughs> We can do that, then we've probably done everything else we can do, and there's no more to do to, do to you. Okay, so we're moving into um, hydrostatics, okay? So this is the area where we start discussing pressures, manometers, pressures on surfaces that are submerged. Um, it's a great example I use. It actually, what is a pressure on a plate glass on the bottom of an aquarium? And I'm thinking to myself, who in the hell builds an aquarium where you look up at the fish? Okay? Seriously. It's a great it's a great example because it wants to calculate the pressures there and what the forces will be and all that fun stuff. But literally, no way in hell. Um, I saw one on Facebook Reels yesterday. Did you? Yeah. yeah. It, 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 was a, it was this inner window thing so the cat could get up there and watch the fish. I don't want to be the engineer that does that <laughs> with... You know, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water over top of me. I'd rather have it done in a glass tube because circular circumference of things hold more pressure than flat surfaces do. But it's a. I think so. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, we're going to deal with pressure today. So, um, And this didn't change any. It's a force. It's a force acting on an area. Anybody remember the lovely equation? Yep. No, seriously. M over V. No. <laughs> Force over area from statics. I know it's been a while for some of you, but do yourself a favor and go back and review some of that stuff. It's going to come back to haunt you. All right. Units. Pounds per inch squared. Newton meters. And we could wind up with pascals. Okay, or even kilopascals, but um, somewhere in there. Now, the interesting thing is, and this is going to sound really dumb and basic, but if I have a cube and I stick in some water, P, 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 and that defines a cube, then I can have a sphere, that's a really crappy sphere, 
Let's do this. We have shapes. Cool. Go away. And I put a pressure on it. Or if I have a point, it will be the same pressure. Okay. Now, why do I bring that up? Because if you remember back in statics, they'd always say, give this little element. And they used to draw these little squares in there and they'd say, What's the stress on this element? And it's this little mystical thing in the center of nowhere. Okay? But it's just a point. They usually use it as a square just to identify where the forces are on it. But the reality is this. Depending on the size of these geometric shapes, the pressure is going to be different in one place than on the other. Okay? But when I'm telling you that the pressure is the same at this point in space, it's all the same all the way around at that point in space. Okay? But it could have that shape. It could be a circle, it could be a, a cube, okay? Are you okay with that? Okay, so don't get hung up on it. Well, I'm going to show you something in a minute here that it happens to be a submarine, and the pressure at the bottom of the submarine is not the same pressure at the top of the submarine. Okay? And that would be problematic. And it's also, if you think about a diver going down in certain depths, the pressure and his helmet is different than the pressure at his boots. Okay. All right. So All right, so we have a submarine in the ocean, and we have a pressure on it, okay? And it's at some depth down here, and we're going to label it as Z for now. We'll change it eventually to, um, we'll start using H, but Z is a good mathematical way to think about this if you're doing it, okay? I guess I should draw some arrows here. Okay, and we're going to be able to figure out what's going on at different depths based on some of these laws. So far with me? Now, while you're all keeping that up, I told you there's two types of engineers in the world, right? Those who make targets and those who make weapon systems. Well, I'm a mechanical engineer. I make submarines. You guys make targets. Okay. Funny thing is, is mechanical engineers make boats too, or naval architects do. And the whole reason for a submarine is to sink a boat. You know. <laughs> Submarines don't usually sink things on land, um, but generally we're there. So far, looks like everybody's caught up. Okay, I'm going to slide that up just a bit. We'll use some space there. We've got a couple of laws we've got to play with. First law is Pascal.
Okay, so pressure is going to equal or act equal in all directions by a small volume of fluid. So that's why I went from that cube to sphere to a point. Those cubes in that sphere are representing some point on that depth on the surface of something. Okay, but ideally, it's really acting at a point. All right. The uh, second law, or the second part of this, um, that dash doesn't need to be in there. I don't know what I was doing. Okay, so pressure will act perpendicular to its boundaries. So this is really cool. First one explains Pascal's second law. The diagram to the my left here right actually discusses a lot of things we're gonna do with submerged surfaces. Okay. And we're gonna have some fun with that. Well, I'll have some fun with that. I shouldn't speak for you, but you'll have some fun with it. If you're not having fun, let me know, though. Right? We want to have some fun. Hopefully. All right. Now, what happens if the shape changes? Because, you know, we're humans. We like to make weird things. So this side all stays the same, but right here, things get a little wonky. So in that corner, it's still perpendicular, but we're perpendicular to a curve. Anybody go through all the math and never figure out why you do all the stuff you do in calculus? This is the reason, okay? We're looking at an infinitely small particle on that surface that that force acts on, okay? And it'll be perpendicular to that, okay? Now, the one we really like to play with in civil is this. Um, Do, do, do. 
is we like to look at dams. Okay. I can't think of a greater civil engineering project than a dam. Okay. And they're never just a vertical wall. And I had to, oh, Brian threw up. I had a discussion mm -hmm. with him about doing a concrete masonry form. Sorry, it was a styrofoam. So, um, Anyways, the styrofoam building blocks for a wall, 30 feet tall. Mm -hmm. And it's like, huh? Gotta be some limits to that. I get all the forces are pretty much going downward. But wind loads? 30 feet of concrete going in the air, that's a little sketchy. Um, it's like, what braces are you building at? And, well, I gotta work that out. It's like, I hope so. <laughs> Even if you put eight feet of it in the ground, that still puts. 22 feet above the ground, and it's like, okay, great. You tie the rafters on the top of this wall, and you get the uh, rafters for the trusses, and you get the cross ties at the top, but still, you can wrap concrete around it. Not what I want to do. But it's down in water, same thing. Uh, Hoover Dam is actually at the top, is oh, 400 feet wide at the top, but at the bottom, it's something like 900 feet. So it tapers outward this way, goes straight down this wall, but it's got a lot of concrete down here to hold up all that pressure on this side. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. The other fun thing with pressure and containers is this. doesn't come out. Actually, what I do hate is the new surface does not draw as smoothly as the old surface did for angled lines, and I don't know why. Hmm. Pisses me off. So the pressure at an equal depth, no matter what the container looks like, is the same. So basically what it says is shape doesn't matter. Okay? So literally, if I have a reservoir that's 400 feet in the air, and I go to another reservoir that the bottom of the pressure at this higher one could be the same pressure as what's down below at its equal depth. Okay? The only thing's going to change is we've got atmosphere, or not atmospheres, we've got the earth involved. But ideally, as long as the depths are the same, it's the same pressure. But they need to have the same volume and density. Nope. No. I'm not on volume whatsoever. Shape, volume, nothing. All it is is depth. So, um, Death Valley. Everybody know how far Death Valley is below sea level? It's deep. Okay. Um, so Death Valley has higher pressure, but that pressure is the same all across that. It's the same pressure as if you went someplace else and took away the water and went out to Cal the, um, Catalina Island off the shore and took all the water away. Death Valley and the depth, equal depth on the planet off Catalina Island would be the same pressure. Um, 14.7, so it would be probably 13.8 or something. And it's enough to make a change. It okay. doesn't matter on shape, it doesn't matter on a lot of things. Okay. It's just elevation change changes pressure. Okay. All right, while well, we're playing with this, and yeah, we've been playing with water because that's what you guys do, but I want you to get a handle on pressure. So, Pressure in Denver, Colorado, for air pressure, is lower than pressure at sea level. 
And the reason they call it Mile High City is it is literally 5,200 and I don't think it's 80 feet. It's actually like 57 feet or something, but close enough. No one's going to dispute it, um, or at least their claim. Which, by the way, you can claim anything. And if people buy it enough, they believe it. So pay attention to what you think you know to what you've been told over the years and question it without fail. Okay? Just because someone who stands up here and got a professional engineering license says this is true, you shouldn't believe me. Okay? Because you're going to fall for stupid shit. Yes, sir. I say <laughs> that will not believe you. You don't want to fall for dumb things down the road. Prove it to yourself. Be curious enough about your profession to make sure it's right. Okay? But yeah, people have been claiming it's mile high, but I don't think the elevation is quite someplace in Denver. I'm sure it's exactly one mile, but I'm not sure the whole city is. Um, it's in a great big hole. Right? Um, airplanes. So as we move in the air in an airplane, pressure gets less the higher we go in the atmosphere. So why we have to pressurize the plane so that you can breathe naturally. Otherwise, everybody would be wearing oxygen masks the entire flight. And the amount of oxygen needed would be ridiculous. It's also why B-17 bombers and B-24 bombers in World War II, they flew high enough, they all needed to be in the oxygen masks. Not pressure suits, but oxygen masks. Okay? So same thing goes when we go down to scuba diving. We don't go scuba diving past, I think the depth of free diving is 90 meters, okay? which every meter is three feet. So think about that depth. That person is insane. Okay, because you, you got to stop before you make it to bends. So anything below a certain depth, they wind up putting everybody in a pressurized capsule. Unless you're the jerk that was trying to show <laughs> off and go see the Titanic and the cheapest <laughs> carbon composite fiber <laughs> cyclops submarine on your planet, and goes poof. You know, when the U.S. Navy heard poof, I think they were checking every hydrophone in the world trying to figure out where their subs were at the point in time. Okay, <clears throat> and they didn't know where their subs are. They didn't know where Russian subs are. They didn't know where everybody's subs are. And that sub just went poof. Like, that caused a hell of a problem around all the world navies, I suspect. Okay? But they failed because they went too deep. Okay? And you don't want to do that. But it's only on depth. So that submarine could have been in Lake um, Superior and been roughly at the same depth when it poof and as it was in the ocean. The only difference is the density of the fluids, okay? But generally, the depth is the only thing that's going to cause problems with this. Okay. Cool. Now, where am I going with all this? Pressure at depth. Okay. So, All right, this is the Sorry, that's surface, not square. On a surface. You know how many times I've written this in my life?
Okay. Basically, it's this. W equals specific weight times volume. I'm sorry, what is the word after F? Exerted. Volume is the area times Z. Okay. And F becomes W equal to Oops, I'm going to get rid of that. A times Z. Okay. And if substitute pressure in we get P equals F over A which will be equal to this times A times Z over A and we have some fun with the math and we knock the A's for a loop then we're going to get specific weight times Z. Okay. Body following along? Cool. Now, the only thing we're going to do with this down the road is the Z will go away and we'll use the term H for height. Okay. Now, that H could be depth too. Um, don't get hung up on it. But it is, we're looking at the change in height. Okay. Which I can put that in here to remind you all, but we'll probably see this. P is equal to specific weight delta H. Okay. But I leave the first one in there because believe it or not, you can turn that into a calculus equation and calculate the change in pressure. Okay. All right. Everybody good so far? I hate drawing this thing. Diagram. Just draw it. No, actually, I know how I want to do this. Live smarter, not harder. All right, so if we divide this into subsections, and we wanted to integrate the areas, we could find all kinds of things mathematically, but I'm going to cheat, okay? We are one foot on a side. Okay. At here, we're going to be pressure equal to 4.33 pounds per inch squared. At halfway, 2.165 pounds per inch squared. And then literally here, we're going to be P is equal to 0 0.4433 pounds per inch squared. So ideally, at different feet down, one foot, five feet, ten feet, we're going to get that, okay? All 
All right, some notes that go with this. A foot square section of water ten feet high contains ten cubic feet if Okay, so that's how that all came about. It's not like I made that math up, but as you don't have your books, it's one of those things that explains in there. So. Anybody lost or confused at this point in time? All right, so one other thing we need to talk about pressure is Now, I know better than to make this statement, but it's important to have some basic standard references that we all play with, okay? Can the air pressure at sea level change? I gotta shake my head and no. Yes, no, maybe? Cameron, you're looking at it hard. What do you think? Can the air pressure at sea level be different than 14.7? I'm going to say no. Okay, we got a hard no now. <clears throat> Just a maybe change. What else do you think? Maybe. 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 It could change. It could change. 
could change. Maybe it's a safe yes. answer. Yes. Maybe it's a safe answer. Chickens. Clock, 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 they're all falling. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Atmospheric pressure changes around the globe all the time. That's why we have weather fronts. Okay? So 14.7 is absolute pressure at 60 degrees Fahrenheit at this condition, at that condition, specified by the world of whatever. Okay? We just assume it's 14.7 and take it at that assumption. But I want you to be careful that somewhere down in your lifetime, someone comes back and says, well, it does change. It does. It could be 14.69, it could be 14.67. It could be, yeah, it could be 14.8, it could be 14.9, okay? But high pressure systems, low pressure systems, and they all affect the pressure, okay? High pressure systems in the atmosphere drive air down to the earth because it's higher pressure. So of course the sea level is gonna be higher, okay? My favorite trick down in the air conditioning lab, I have a um, mercury barometer, not a mer I have a mercury barometer too, but I have a brass barometer. And my favorite trick is walk by it every day and change the indicator dial, dial to know where it was yesterday. And it changes all the time. Uh, I'm probably the only one that actually uses this stupid thing. You know, <laughs> to the point that I should probably retire with it because uh, no one else is going to use it. But it can change. But well, we have to have a number that gives us the definition. Okay, and you can look it up and get the exact temperatures and pressures and volumes and all that sort of stuff with it, but it changes. Okay, just be aware of that. Okay, now, oh, gauge pressure. Look at this one canoe pressure. Well, I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> um, that's bad. All right, we have absolute pressure, then we have gauge pressure. Yeah, it's not canoe pressure. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's pressure in excess Okay, now, I don't really like the definition that's used with this one because it could be excess, yes, if the pressure's higher than 14.7, then that will give me my gauge pressures, and I'll do a little math here for you in a second. But ideally, what if the pressure's lower than 14.7? That's not an excess. That's a diminutive loss. You know, what's the deal there, people? So keep in mind, I know the true definition uses the word excess, but... Yeah, it could be different. Okay. Um, it is a, by convention, So gauge pressure on the top of a body of uh, water, Lake Ontario, Lake Superior, the ocean, will be zero gauge pressure, but 14.7 atmospheric, okay? So by convention, here's a new term, hopefully, maybe, well, new term I'm using here today, maybe not a new term you haven't seen someplace else, but what do I mean by convention? Academic. It's not academic. Although the jerks were probably the ones that created it. Um, it's what we use as a standard value. Okay, So we all convened. This is no joke. So somewhere in the world, 
it was a bunch of engineers that got together one time and says, look, we're going to make gauges. We need to come up with a standard number. Can you imagine that debate going on for three days? You know, somebody did. They declared it. It's all it comes down to by convention. We declare it to be this. You could declare SUNY Canton the best college in the world by convention. So vote on it. Yeah, it's all vote on it. We could have some fun with that one. Okay. All right. Now the next bit of this is. I'm sorry. There's a bunch of definitions here pressure increases oops no I did that wrong Okay, so the pressure increases linearly as we go deeper. Can you imagine a world in which the pressure increased exponentially as we went deeper? You wouldn't go very deep. You know? um, just think about diving into a school pool that's 12 feet deep in the deep end. You know, you'd be crushed at the bottom. You know? No way. So thank God. Physics actually works the way physics works, or otherwise we'd be in trouble. Okay. All right. Um, P is equal to specific weight times Z only. So, no idea what Dr. Regal's little glass bottle is doing up here, but mm -hmm. if I fill that full of water and I don't move it, it will be at rest. The pressure at the bottom will be the pressure at the bottom. But what if I start shaking it? Now we get momentum going on in there mm -hmm. and the pressures are going to change. Okay. So when we measure this, we assume it to be at rest. Okay. Now, if you find a situation where the body of water is at rest, let me know. Um, it's stagnant and things have died. And it's probably turned green and ugly. Okay. But along with this one wants to come this caveat. Um, when we start dealing with bodies of water, we're going to make an assumption, and I will remind you later on when we get to those points. But assume that the body of water is infinitely large so that we can classify it as static. All right? Otherwise, we're going to be in serious trouble. Okay, that's a good place to stop. There. I got a couple more of those to go up, but we'll finish. Them. I don't know where my day goes. Especially like the past couple of semesters I've had my classes like kind of hard.